I've installed several GameCube mod chips over the years, so when I heard about the Pico Boot, an IPL replacement mod chip using an affordable Raspberry Pi, I was excited to install one. Using a Raspberry Pi Pico board, which runs for under five bucks, it couples with a micro SD card adapter and the Swiss Homebrew utility for a fully featured, open source and affordable modding solution. Not only is the Pico cheap, but it's easily updatable since it can simply plug into a computer just by using a micro USB cable. The Pico Boot project is thanks to a software engineer from Poland named WebHDX. Not only has he released an open sourced Pico Boot, but he's also working on a M.2 SSD adapter for the GameCube, as well as an aftermarket WaveBird receiver. Check out his GitHub and Twitter profiles link below to stay updated. I'll be using a DOL001 model GameCube for this project. Otherwise, you'll need the Raspberry Pi Pico, an SD to SP2 SD card adapter, which plugs into the GameCube's second serial port, as well as a micro SD card. This will need to be formatted to FAT32 or XFAT. Additionally, I purchased this thermal pad just in case those in the GameCube need replacing, but more on that later. Let's start by preparing the Pico and the SD card. Navigate to the project's GitHub and follow the link to the release page. There, we need to download a file named picoboot.uf2. Connect the Pico to your computer with a USB cable while holding down its boot cell button. This will enable Windows to see it as a storage device. Copy the file picoboot.uf2 to the Pico and the Pico will automatically eject. A green LED on the Pico will light up if all was successful. Next, download the latest release of Swiss, also linked below. Extract the package and navigate to the DOL folder. Copy the file named swiss.dol, which also includes the version number in the file name, and copy it to the SD card. Rename it to ipl.dol. This is all we need to do for now, but after the hardware installation, this is where the ISO files of your game backups can later be copied to. It's worth noting that there are two variations of the GameCube. The DOL001, which is what I'm using, and the newer DOL101 model. While this mod will work with the 101, it should be noted that it's missing the serial port that we will plug the SD card adapter into. Instead, you can use a device like an SD Gecko, which enables an SD card to be interfaced with the memory card slot. We won't be covering that today, however. The wiring is also slightly different, so be mindful that what I show is for the DOL001 model of GameCube. Having said that, the wiring is quite straightforward, only requiring 5 wires. Start by prepping the Pico by tinning the relevant pads. These will be the same for both models of GameCube. There are the 3.3V and ground pads on one side, as well as the GP4 and GP5 pads on the other. Additionally, pads GP6 and GP7 need to be bridged. Let's crack on with the disassembly of the GameCube. First, there are four game bit screws to remove. I'm struggling a bit here as my adapters are over 10 years old and are quite worn. Funnily enough though, brand new ones arrive the day after filming. Typical. Once those are out, flip the GameCube over and remove the top half of the case. This is easiest done with the lid open. Next, there are just about 7 billion Philip head screws to remove around the perimeter that hold the disk drive in place. The controller module can also be removed by carefully unplugging the ribbon cable. The backplate should also easily pop off. After all that, the disk drive should remove as one portion since it's just held in place by a connector underneath. Pull that to one side, and the last thing we'll need to remove is the heatsink. There are traditionally six screws for that, although mine was missing two. This is where the new thermal pad from before might become useful. If it rips in half, it will lose the ability to transfer heat at its full potential. Mine came off mostly intact, so I chose to reuse it. But if I start running into overheating issues, I'll know what to do. As a general rule, however, the existing pads are 20 years old, so replacing them anyway probably isn't the worst idea. Also, thermal paste is not a good solution for such a large surface area. Thermal pads only, kids. On my model of GameCube, the points we need to wire to the Pico are shown in this very straightforward diagram available on the GitHub. These two points need to be bridged for a ground connection, a GP5 and a 3.3V connection are in the same hub of pads. Additionally, GP4 and the combined GP6 and 7 connections soldered to these two points on this IC. Start by fluxing up the area, and then struggle as it makes a mess of your pen marks you just put down, although this step is optional. As well as bridging the two ground points, I also reflowed the points I'm soldering to by adding fresh solder. This makes the wiring process much easier. I did the same for the points on the IC, although I did check these with a multimeter just to be sure I didn't bridge any points together since they are so small. 
Then, using wires that I had pre-stripped and tinned, it was a simple process of soldering the wires to the circuit board. I tried to use the same colours as the wiring diagram to keep it consistent, but I didn't have any yellow wire so substituted it for brown. The potential toilet humour wasn't intentional, by the way. The bunch of wires are directed out this side because of where I'm mounting the Pico internally. To keep them bunched together and also protected from the case closing in on that point, I shrunk some heat tubing. And yes, I shamelessly stole this idea from Macho Nacho's video. From there, all the wires were soldered to the relevant pre-tinned pads on the Pico. Be sure to wire them in a way where they don't get in the way of each other, or accidentally touch any neighbouring pads where the copper is exposed. Now, let's install the SD card into the serial adapter and plug that in. I also reattached the heatsink for a test before mounting everything permanently. And BAM! There we go. That was easy. With that confirmation, I started reassembly and the massive amount of screwing, stopping short of securing the controller module in place. The plan is to mount it about… Mm, here. I did see that someone has already designed a 3D printable mount for the project. I might get around to this in the future, but for now, we'll see how a simple portion of double-sided tape handles things. I also later attached some electrical tape, since the Pico was shorting out with the controller port module. I guess the tape is a bit too thick to keep it clear. But from here, it was time to get down with the rest of assembly. I should point out that I kept a Xeno GC mod chip installed from a previous video. According to the GitHub page, it's totally fine to keep it in there, even if you plan to never use it again. This is good, since desoldering it will be a pain. And I'm sure you know what I mean if you've installed one yourself. So for now, I guess it will stay entombed. And that's it! A very easy installation using cheap parts that introduces a slew of features to your aging GameCube. I for one wish to use the GBI interface for my Game Boy player, which is a vast improvement over the official disc. Since tracking down and using those tiny DVD-Rs that fit into the GameCube is a bit difficult, I look forward to running it off the SD card. You can also use it to play some sneaky ISOs, or legal backups of your own collection of course. But that's all for today. Thank you for watching, and additionally, a big thank you for 10,000 subscribers. Hooray! See you in the next video.